Hello and welcome to Firepower Device Manager Out of the Box Experience. This video is part of the mini series called Cisco Firepower Device Manager. If you haven't already, please take a look at the introduction video to get an overview of what is Firepower Device Manager. It is Cisco's new web-based simplified device manager to manage Cisco's integrated next generation firewall or firepower threat defense software offering. Once you've opened your box, let's get connected. Here is the recommended network deployment. The factory default configuration has outside and inside interfaces pre-configured with a DHCP server pool on the inside. Cable the following to a layer through Ethernet switch, the inside interface, the management interface, and your computer. Connect the outside interface to your WAN device, for example, your cable modem or the gateway to your ISP. Your management PC will receive an IP address from the inside DHCP address pool to give you the best out-of-box experience, once you launch your browser from the management PC, Firepower Device Manager will walk you through the initial setup wizard and give you the default NAT routing and access rule configuration and get connected. I will walk you through this in the demo and show you how you can now start monitoring the health of your device once you are connected. To provide you with a better experience with licensing as well, Cisco is moving towards the model of smart licensing. And FTD follows the same. The licenses are not tied to a particular device, but stored in your account on Cisco Smart Software Manager. But if you're familiar with the traditional ASA or Firepower Services licensing, here is a mapping for you. The base license comes free and includes networking, firewall, and application visibility and control. Beyond that, you can purchase term-based licenses for advanced threat protection, including threat or IPS, malware, and URL filtering. And with that, let's jump into the demo. In the demo, we will log into the default IP address of the management interface, which is 192.168.45.45, with the default credentials, which is admin, admin123. We will accept the EULA, change the password, and walk through the initial setup wizard to configure the outside interface. We will also configure the DNS and the NTP servers. And then we'll move on to exploring the device dashboard and the default created NAT, routing, and access policy configs. We will then configure or change the address of the inside interface to suit our business needs. And then I'll show you how you can explore the system health monitoring dashboard to, that gives you the status and health of your device. So here I've logged into my Firepower Device Manager with the default IP address 192.168.45.45 and let's log in with the default credentials admin admin123. Once you log into the box, you need to go ahead and accept the EULA. Now let's change the current password to something more stronger. And this brings us to the device setup page. This is our initial setup wizard where we can configure the outside address and connectivity. You can even minimize the connection diagram if you don't want to take a look at it. And here at the bottom, we will select our outside interface. Notice if you don't have internet and you want to skip device setup, 
you can do so from this step one. Let's go ahead, click next, and connect our firewall to the internet, which could be this connectivity to your ISP, WAN, or gateway. For outside interface, I'm going to do a manual input and put an IP address according to my outside network. Let's add the gateway to the router. Notice these info icons on the side tell you what is that text box supposed to mean. Let's do off for configuring IPv6. And here at the bottom, you can do a management interface DNS configuration. You could use OpenDNS if you want to use our OpenDNS cloud. Or you can simply type in your address for the DNS server. Let's change the firewall host name as well. And hit next. This will try to make a connection to the outside and test the connectivity by connecting to cisco.com. Once that is successful, it will move on in the wizard to configure NTP settings. You can select Cisco NTP server or manually input one of yours. Hit next. That brings us to Cisco Smart Software Manager Smart Licensing page. If you already have an account and a token, you can register. Or for now, let's start with a 90-day evaluation period. That brings us to the end of the initial setup wizard. And notice from here, you can configure your interfaces or policy as the next step. For the purpose of this demo, I'm just going to go ahead and close this window and let's explore the device dashboard notice you already have connectivity to the outside and everything looks green except the smart licensing which is in the eval mode you can hover over these interfaces to see more information about them you can go deeper into the interfaces configuration tab and notice you can go back to device dashboard by clicking on either device dashboard or the host name. Look at the default routing that was created because of walking through the initial setup wizard to your outside network. And you can edit or discard this if you'd like to make any changes. Notice the objects that were created automatically for you as well. go back and check out the updates card. This is where you can do your updates for your geolocation, intrusion rules and vulnerability database. And we we'll look at into this into deeper into the other video. This is the smart licensing tab. Once you've got an account from Cisco, you can go ahead and uh, register this. But notice you have to enable each term-based licenses on this tab to take the advantage of it in your policies. So now you can use your IPS file and URL filtering policies. Here is the backup and restore card. Notice the options on the top to do your backup and restore. And we'll go into this deeper as well. And you can also create troubleshoots. You have access to all your system settings in this card and you can change your management access list, DHCP and DNS server settings or the NTP server settings. Let's go ahead and see our DHCP server settings which were created by default on the inside. We want to change the inside IP address so we're going to go ahead and delete this DHCP server setting on the inside interface. Notice the deploy button had a color popped up, which means we have deployment pending that we need to do. 
We can change all our settings and then deploy once or you can change after every deploy. Let's go ahead and change the interface setting and then deploy. So I'm going to change this to something that suits my inside address. And now let's hit deploy and deploy now. Notice at the bottom here, you're going to see a summary of the previously deployed objects. You can close this tab. It's going to keep running in the background. Notice the other tabs on the top. You have the monitoring tab. And notice the system dashboard that gives you an overview of the system, including the throughput, the events, the CPU, memory, and the disk usage. The policies, notice the default access rule that was created along with the default action at the bottom for block, and the default NAT rule that was created for any to outside. Here are the objects. Notice all the object types and we'll go into deeper into this in another video as well. Let's quickly check our deployment summary. Make sure it's deployed. You can expand on the changes that you made. And let's also change the device management IP address to the same network as is our inside. Once you do this, remember that you're going to lose connection to the default IP address. So you will need to open another browser and log in with the new management IP address. Let's open a new browser and go to the new management IP address. Ignore the warning and proceed towards. And remember that now you need to log in with the new password that you just changed. And here you go, all connected and ready to configure some access control policies to protect your next door. Thank you for joining me today. Please make sure to take a look at the other videos for Firepower Device Manager to learn more about it. Thank you again.